Booker Tov, today's staff is Daf Chof Beis in Yevamas. Uh, yesterday we got down to about the eighth, seventh, eighth line, Tony Debe Rabchia. We had learned yesterday in the Bryce that there were eight Shlios, and then uh, we added a few more. Uh, there was a ninth, and maybe two more, 11th and 12th, and then we have now Rabchia's six. So depending on how you count them, you might wind up with 17, you might wind up with 16. Tani the of here, what are the ones that he added on? The other shnias, the other secondary <coughs> sexual prohibitions, relationships that the, that the rabbis forbade. Shlishi Sheva Bnova Sheva Bito, the third generation of his daughter and son. What does that really mean? Your great granddaughter, right? What do we say? The Torah prohibits you from marrying, uh, from living with your daughter or your granddaughter. What about your great granddaughter? So Rashi tells us, Shlishi Sheva Bno, Bas Ben Bno. The daughter of your yes. son, son, right? Because the Baspano Erva, Baspano, the Baspano Erva, your granddaughter already is forbidden. This is your great granddaughter. We had her. Remember yesterday we were talking about your grandmother and your mother-in-law's mother, all those. So now we add on also your great granddaughter, either from your son or your daughter, Ben Ishto, Bas Ishto, or your great granddaughter from your wife's side even if it's not yours, because you can't, the Torah already forbids you to marry your wife's daughter and granddaughter or live with them. The same way, the great granddaughter, those two, those, that's four, Shnia. Now, the, in other words, he says the third generation, when he says the third generation, we mean uh, from the, the third generation, him down, meaning not counting him, Sheva Bnov, Sheva Bito, meaning your son, his son, your son's son, and then his daughter, your son's son's daughter, that would be your great granddaughter right, from your son. And then he says, Ravi Shabachamov Shabamoso. And the fourth level of your mother-in-law and, and your mother-in-law's um, mother's mother. Right? Rashi says, Ravi Shabachamov, Doravi Shabachamov, I know aim aim chamov, uh Doravi, meaning the mother of your mother of the mother of the mother of your father-in-law. Or of your mother-in-law, or either your father-in-law or mother-in-law. Those are also In other words, he's added on six cases: your great-granddaughter from your son or your daughter, son, your right from your son or your daughter, your great-granddaughter, your wife's granddaughter from son or daughter, and your mother-in-law's mother's mother or your father-in-law's mother's mother. Okay. Now here he says Ravi. So the Gemara says, and as Ravi counts. His wife, the fourth generation includes the wife, your wife's mother, her mother, and then her mother, or your wife's father, and then mother and mother. So that's that's the that's the he counts that as the fourth generation. But in the first ones, when he talks about his own grand great granddaughter or or his wife's great granddaughter, he only counts it counting from from himself three. Similar to Vila Rashi, Maishal Lamal de Choshim Lishta. We're talking about the same thing. We're talking about a fourth generation from him. But why, when it comes to uh, when you talk about Maishal Lamal, we can talk about the generations above, meaning your the the uh, grand the uh, your your uh, your mother-in-law's or father-in-law's grandmother. That's really your mother-in-law, father-in-law's grandmother. You talk about four, including the wife, including your wife. That's fourth generation from your wife. Maishal Lamal, when you talk about your great-granddaughters, Lo Choshim Lishto. You didn't count the wife. You just counted from, you know, from your son, your son's son's daughter, or your or your daughter's uh, son's daughter. So You didn't count the wife, and you counted that as three generations below. And when it comes to going above, it's either way. It's three generations below, not counting him and his wife. And if you count him and his wife, it's four generations above. So why? So so why why at the beginning when he talks about his great granddaughters, he doesn't count the wife. When he talks about the uh, the generations going up, the mother-in-law's uh, grandmother or the father-in-law's grandmother, then you do count for. Um, so, when it, when you're talking about above, because of his, we're talking about it because of his wife, his wife's father's grandmother or his wife's mother's grandmother. So you're talking about because of his wife, so we count the wife too, because it's because of the wife. Lamata, but we're talking about below, we're talking about the grand, the great granddaughter, the Sura Lavinkov is not coming from his wife, because Lavinkov it's coming from his own relationship, meaning his own, it's his own great granddaughter, because he we don't count it. Iva Ben Ishto Basishto, the Surmikah Ishto, but when it comes to your wife's 
grand, your wife's great granddaughter, right? Your wife's great granddaughter, then it is because of the wife. Since when it comes to him, we're only, there's no wife. We're talking about him, him. We're talking about his own great granddaughter could be out of wedlock. It doesn't make any difference, but it's because it's his. Um, since there it's only three, we didn't count it. Now, as we're talking about the generations below a great granddaughter, since when it comes to him, it's not a, not not because of his wife, even if it's not, it, it's because of him, even if it's out of wedlock or it's from a different wife, whatever. It's not his wife, not, not because of his wife. So there, there it's only three. So for the wife below, we also count three. But going above, when you talk about his mother-in-law, his father-in-law, his grandmother, then it's only because of his wife. So we count we count the four. So either way, he has six he has six additional prohibitions of shneas that were not included in the original eight, nor in the two or three that we mentioned yesterday. On Ahmed Bay's. Um, no, we're talking about Mir. We're not talking about Yibam at all. This discussion has nothing to do with, with Yibam. It's good, glad that you point, pointed out. We're talking about what are the Shniyas in general. The Mishnah had said that if a Shniya falls to you to Yibam, example, <clears throat> your brother from your father's side was married to your grandmother on your mother's side. Your brother has no relationship with your grandmother. Your grandmother was from a previous marriage, right? You have a grandmother. Now you have a, you, you share a, a, a brother. Is that a good one? Um, yeah, you, you, sh you uh, share, no, no, uh, yeah, yeah. Your brother, uh, your brother is married to your, to your grandmother on your mother's side, your maternal, your maternal grandmother. You could She's do that, right? Oh, the, here's the problem. The problem is, the problem is, is, is he your, he's, he's your grandfather's wife also. So as your, your grandfather's wife, if your grandmother, let's assume it was out of wedlock. Let's say it was out of wedlock. Your grandmother is your grandmother out of wedlock. She wasn't married to anybody when she had your mother, let's say, okay? She wasn't married, but she's still your, your grandmother, right? Your mother was born, uh, uh, um, you know, wasn't wasn't married to uh, she when your grandmother gave birth to your mother, she wasn't married to anybody, including the person who impregnated her. Okay, but she's still your grandmother. Now your father married somebody else and gave birth to you and and to a brother. You have a brother. That brother married your grandmother. It wasn't his grandmother. It wasn't his grandmother. He came from somebody else, right? But you have the same father. That makes sense, right? Am I talking sense here? Right. Okay. So your brother married your grandmother, right? You can have that. Your brother cannot marry your mother, right? Your brother cannot marry your mother because it's because it's it's your mother's it's your father's. If if they were if it's if it's from uh, if they was if they were married if they were married your regular mother. But you, but let's say your brother was married to your grandmother and your brother died with no children and your grandmother fell to your teeth. So that's a case of a shnia. You can't marry your grandmother. That's one of the first uh, the first eight that we talked about yesterday. The uh, Tan Rabbanan. Where did we start off with? Um, oh, I'm looking at the wrong daf here. Chafal uh, here. Um, yeah. What do we say? Tan Rabbanan. My shnia. Same emo. Your grandmother. Your mother's mother. Your mother's mother is a shnia. Is a second secondary uh, relation of the rabbis for bad. Now, so what do you do in that case? What do you do in that case? So the Mishnah said. Shneas medivri sofrim, or we called iser mitzvah zikdusha. You give a chalitza. You give a chalitza. It technically minatora. There's ibum there, because technically minatora, you could marry your grandmother, but the rabbis forbade it because if you marry your grandmother, you might come to live with your mother also. So therefore, so the answer to your question, all the shneas that we're talking about up here are usher in general, nothing to do with ibum, but it's brought down over here because we said in the Mishnah that if one of these shneas fell to you to Yibam, as, as the case I just gave before, if your brother was married to your gra grandmother, so you'd have to give her chalitza. That's why it's mentioned over here. Okay, so we have all these cases. Now we have a total of uh, 16 or 17 cases, depending on how you count them, right? We said 16, but it could be this really 17, depending on how you count them, based on what we saw yesterday. Tush, uh, so now we come to another question. Okay, uh, Tanya Nami, uh, uh, Tanya Nami, uh, Gimel Dora, Sometimes the Matadav Lagwash, Amalir Vashi Lurafkana. This is where we are. 
this is where we're in the Gemara now. Amalei Rashi Lukana, Shni is the Be'er Fia. These Shni is the Fia mentioned that we just talked about, meaning living with your great-granddaughter, which are not in the first eight or the first 10 or 11, right? living with your great-granddaughter or living with your, uh, your, your wife's, um, your wife's uh, gr- uh, great-grandmother, right? living with your wife's great-grandmother. So she is the Be'er Fia, Yesh Lein and the same. Is, is it only them or does it continue on? We say when you can't live with your grandmother, you can't live with your mother, grandmother's mother and her mother and so on and so forth all the way down. You can't live with your son-in-law, your, with your uh, son's uh, daughter-in-law. The Torah tells you can't live with your own daughter-in-law, your son's daughter-in-law and going further down, down all the way down. So what about over here? Does this go all the way down too? And do we say not only your great-granddaughter, but your great-great-granddaughter, your great-great-great-granddaughter? The, how does, how does, it, does that continue on? So Tashma Damra, Damra, Dalad Nashim, Eshlon Hefsi. There are four we had yesterday. Four that we uh, Rav said he enumerated three of them. The Iri added on another one. Have a Hefsi. The Sulo. It's Mashma. Only those have a Hefsi stop, but the other ones continue on. on. So still the Mekik Kamarav Lahi Masnisa. Maybe he was only talking about out of the eight mentioned in the Brisa yesterday, the first Brisa. So out of those eight, four have a Hefsi and the other ones don't. But maybe these two also have a Hefsi. Not clear. Tashma another proof. Shlishi Ravid. What did Rob, what would what did Rukia say? There's a, pardon? Correct. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, but it's possible. It's possible. They gave birth at a young age, whatever. We're just saying, in theory, if it could happen, if you lived that long, would it be forbidden? People do have great, great grandchildren today. You know that, right? There are people who have great, great grandchildren. People live into their 90s and they're, they, they're so good to see great, great grandchildren. You know, many people like that. So let's say a man was a hundred years old, and uh, <laughs> and no, not Yibam. Forget about Yibam. He, he decided he liked his seventeen-year-old great-great-granddaughter. So what prohibition would he be prohibited? The Torah doesn't forbid him, but the rabbis did. The rabbis forbade, according to Be'er Fia, your great-granddaughter. What about the great-great-granddaughter? He'll say, "Listen, he only said the great-granddaughter. She's my great-great-granddaughter." What do you say there? That's the question. Tashma Shlishi Ravid. So what did he say? Rukhia said the third generation going down, meaning his own great granddaughter, and Ravi going up on his on the wife's side, and a fourth generation, but it's the same idea, four generations from him, including him. So Shlishi Ravi ain't fail, but he said third and the fourth, Mash Badafka those, no further. So maybe it means from the third and on, from the fourth and on, meaning the other the other ones were not mentioned. Um, you know, your your uh, your great granddaughter um, uh, wasn't wasn't mentioned in the other cases. Your granddaughter, the Torah forbids you, but your great granddaughter was not mentioned in the other cases. We talked about right. We, we talked to Kalas Beno, Aisha Sevi Aviv, Mayin Shnias, Aim Aimo, Aim Aviv. You know your mother's father, your fa- your your mother's mother, and your father's mother. The Aishas Abiyav of all those other ones mentioned, but we didn't mention the great, great, great granddaughter. So he mentioned them here, but maybe he meant from there and on. Maybe he meant your great granddaughter and your great, great granddaughter and your great, great, great granddaughter. If you live so long, are they forbidden to you? Midarabhanan. So it's not clear. So therefore, this question doesn't get resolved. This question doesn't get resolved. So if you have that problem, <laughs> see your local rabbi because. Uh, <laughs> The question doesn't alive. get resolved if he's still alive. If he's... Yeah, yeah. It's confusing. I'm, you I'm heard like... the joke where the, where the grandfather wants to marry the granddaughter and the doctor tells him, what are you, you know, you're going to have a heart attack and, you know, what, just very easy. So she, if she dies, she dies, you know. Stop <laughs> she dies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Amalei, Amalei, Rava, the Rav Nachman. Amalei, Rav Nachman. Um, so, so that, that question doesn't get resolved, but we still do have these 16, 17 cases. Amalei Rav Le Rav Nachman. Chazimar Haimar Abonim, the Asim Rav. See, look at this rabbi who came from Eretz Yisrael. Amar Bomer Rav Beit in Eretz Yisrael, they asked the following question. Gazushnis begeirim Ola. What about a ger? Now, the halach is that a ger shenas gayer kekut and shenol adam. Based on the, he's a new person. New halachas, basically. That's a, he's not a different person. He's new halachas. He's a new person. So technically, he can marry his sister, Minat Torah. The rabbis don't allow it, but he can marry his sister. So what about, Sh- are there Shneas over there too? Would you say that he also cannot, he's not allowed to marry his next of kin, Midr Rabbanan, but could he marry his grandmother? 
Maybe you don't go that far. He's, he's a gear anyway. He's the halach. Where, where they goes or not? Goes to she is making correct, exactly. But he, could he sleep with her? Could he say, or let's say she or is Jew? Let's say could she converted also? All these cases means let's say she converted. So I'm a goes to she is beger malo. Goes oh goes to she like hashta ma er gufa an er gufa meaning a real next of kin that he cannot uh, live with. If it wouldn't be that the, the rabbi said that people shouldn't say bon he's coming because even a ger, even a guy has Allah that he's not supposed to commit incest or adultery. It's included in the adultery laws, right? Ger of, of, Zion, of Zion, Mrs. Ben Noach, he's not supposed to commit incest or adultery. So the, so the only reason, so, so he can't live with his mother when he's a guy or with his sister, let's say, can't live with her when he's a guy. But when he's Jewish, he's basically a new person. So he could live with her. He could have, let's assume she also was Megayer, so they're both Jewish, right? So Elav Shalit, but the rabbi said, sh- you shouldn't, why? Because people say, listen, you're coming from more stringent, and when he's a guy, it's more stringent, he can't marry his sister. Now he can marry his sister, like you're making it easier for him. There's no such thing, there's no such thing where the, it's, it's, it's less stringent on Jews than it is on Goyim. Elav Shalit, the people shouldn't say, you're coming from a more stringent Kedusha, a guy who can't live with his sister and come to a Kala, now that they're Jewish, they could live together. If it wouldn't be for that, look, Gozer Rabbana, the Rabbana wouldn't, wouldn't have been Gozer at all that he shouldn't live with his sister. Technically, he could live with his sister because he's a new person. She's a new person. He's a new person. His mother's a new person. Everybody's new over there if they're Megayer. So if it wouldn't be for that, so Shneas, me boy, certainly they're not going to be Gozer Shneas. If it wouldn't, even an Arab itself, they were only Gozer, shouldn't live with it that people shouldn't say, talk. I'm not talking about the physical, you know, problems of, uh, of incest and, and what it can cause in children and things like that. Talking about the, uh, the you know, that that can, that may or may not be work in all cases. But in, in um, we're just talking about the Isser. When he's a guy, he can't live with his sister. Now that they're both Megayer, he could live with his sister. So therefore the rabbi said, don't do that. You shouldn't live with your sister. But it's only because of that, not because it's really an Isser Benatorah. Benatorah, a guy and a sister of Megayer, he can marry her. But it's, the rabbi said, don't do that. It shouldn't look like you know, you're going from a more stringent condition when you're a guy, and now it's easier when you're a Jew. So shneis me boy, it's a smash with shneis. Certainly, they were not gozer. I'm Nachman, Geirim, whole bustle yod. And since he mentioned about Geirim, he asked this question about Geirim. Is there shneis there? Name of us, let's learn something. Achim and Ain, lo yidu. Let's say two goyim or megayer, two brothers or megayer. Can they give testimony? Two witnesses cannot be relatives normally to testify, right? You can't, can't testify about the litigants, nor can they themselves be related to one another. Here, where they're new people, they were Megayer, can they give testimony? So he says, if they're, if they're brothers from the mother, lo ya'idu, they shouldn't give testimony because uh, it doesn't look good. They may either, but if they gave testimony, he just says, it is Adis, they're good, they're good Jews. And what's the reason why, why if they're brothers from the mother's side? And Rashi says, imahu. see, because when mothers, you know for sure who the mother is. The father, nobody knows, right? It's mashma today when they do know these things based on DNA, etc., that it's mashma that there would be no difference whether it's from the mother or father. And anyway, he says over here, they shouldn't give testimony, but if they did, they're, they're new people. Achim and Av, if they had the same father when they were Goyim, same father, but not the same mother, they can get, and, and now they were Megayer, they can give testimony of Hashilah because we don't really know who the father is. They're not really considered their brothers at all. It doesn't, it doesn't look so bad. In other words, here the question is, does it look? Because technically they're new people. And therefore, they could give testimony. The question is, how does it look? But if they had the same mother, it doesn't look good. What do you mean it doesn't look good? Because since we know they had the same mother, we know that they're really brothers. People say, okay, if uh, you know, if Clyde and Boone can give testimony over here together, why can't Reuben and Shimon? <laughs> Are the Jews any worse off? So people will say that, and therefore they shouldn't give testimony if Clyde and Boone were from the same mother, but from the same father. Nobody considers them the same anyway. Today, when you know who the father is, if they would know, then maybe we should be going to the same thing. He says, I could also give Lechem Chilo. He says, because, because they're new people. Nobody, we don't care. So, why so was it different? By Erevo, we say, when it comes to a sexual, a forbidden sexual relationship, we say, listen, the guy who was Megayer with his sister should not marry his sister. Why? Because people will say, look, you're going from a, you know, from a, a, a more worse to a more stringent case to a less stringent case. And people will say, look, if he can marry his sister, maybe other people will marry his sister. Or maybe other people will marry their sisters. But over here, when he says the giving testimony, we don't care. They can both give testimony. What's the difference between giving testimony and a rise? Why by a rise are we go there? 
and here not. So erva l'chol Erva, anybody get married. Everybody gets married. So therefore, if, you're, if you allow him to marry his sister, people will say also, a Jew could also marry his sister. People will make a mistake. Adis is only the Bezdin Surbi. Adis is only in front of Bezdin. Bez knows that Bezdin knows that these, can, these two brothers are considered new people. The Gersh and Askar cut and Shanoa dummy. And people will know that. And Inami Machshus Adim, Adis Achim, Adis Achim Gerim, Lo Asi Lachshi, you won't come to Machshus Achim Yisrael. The Bezdin Yodi, the Gersh and Askar cut and Shanoa dummy. Bezdin knows the halacha. So if you're matter to Goyim, who, two brothers who were Goyim, who were Megayer, and now they're new people, they can both give testimony. They're new people. They're two regular Jews now. I you say, if you're being Mata there, you'll be Mata to Jewish, to uh, regular Jewish people, to brothers to be, to be give aid. No, because that's in front of Bezin. Bezin knows what they're doing. Bezin knows that Gershon, Skyrock, and Chanel dummy, and therefore they're, they're, not, they're not considered brothers. And that's why you can accept their testimony as opposed to two regular Jewish brothers where you know they're brothers and you can't accept their testimony. But whereas when it comes to Erva, if you're Mata, a uh, Goy, who is Megayer with his sister to get for them to get married? People will be matter also. People say, "Listen, I can get married. Uh, you don't have to go to Bezin to get married. You don't even need a rabbi. The, the rabbi people think you can't get married unless you have a rabbi. You need two kosher witnesses. That's what you need. The rabbi's just there to make sure that you know that no fights break out. <laughs> you know that uh, <laughs> the things are done properly. That's all. So the point is, anybody can get married. So he says, "Oh, he married a sister. I can marry my sister too." And that's what people might. Mishi eshlach mikol mokim says the Mishnah. Whoever has any kind of a brother, Zokik as Ishto, Zokik says Zokhavlibum, any kind of a brother forces and obligates, uh, uh, binds a, the Aisha Zakhav, the wife, Libum. In other words, if Ruben and Shimon were brothers, any kind of brothers, we'll see what that means in a minute. They're any kind of brothers, as long as they had the same father, that forces Leah into Yibum. The Achavilachal Dover, and he's his total brother. We'll see what that means in all aspects. Futz me, me, Sheishlo, Ach, Menashivchan Reschem. If your brother is not from the same mother, meaning you had a regular Jewish mother and your brother uh, was born out of from a, a, a shifcha or a obedes chavim, either a non-Jewish woman, then it's not considered your brother. It's not even considered your father's child. It's a shifcha or it's a goy. So therefore, so uh, except for those, that's not your brother. But if you have any other kind of brother, we'll see. We're talking about a mamzer, a mamzer. That's your brother. And yet forces her into, into Yibam. We'll talk about this. Mishishlo ben mikomak, if any kind of a son, Remember, when is Yibam only when Reuben had no children? If he had any kind, let's say he had a child who was a mamzer, does that does that does that potter and and uh, takes away the obligation of Reuben? Yes, it does, because it's a valid son. Mishishlo ben mikomakum potter If if a man has a son, Reuben had a son, a mamzer, even from a from another marriage. And now his new wife, his kosher, his regular wife, had, uh, is there. And she had no children. He had no children with her. But he had a mom's once before. If he man dies, if he had any children at all, even from a prior marriage, there's no even. And this kind of a son, who's and we're talking about a mom's, we'll see. He's a son. If the son hits his father, curses his father, and he's a son in all aspects, he gets the Yerush, everything. Except if a person had a son from a shifra of his coven, that's not a son. In other words, it's not your son. It's a, it's a goy or it's an evet. It's not your son. But if you he, if he have a kid who's a mamzer, a mamzer could be a tamar chacham also. Remember, like we said, mamzer, it's not his fault, right? This is somebody else uh, caused him to be a mamzer. Uh, he could be a he's, a, he's a son in all aspects. Now, he does have rules. He can't marry a regular Jewish woman. He has to marry either another mamzeres or a ger, but he can't marry a regular Jewish woman. Yeah, 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 son from another wife. Right. That's not what he's yeah, any son. If a man died, if had any children, there's no yibam, no matter who he had it from. Unless he had it from a goy, as we said, it's a son in all aspects. That's not a son. If he had a son with a shiksa, that's not your son. Or shiksa, it's not your son. That based on psukim, we'll see this all. What does mikom makom include? If you had any kind of a brother or any kind of son, to include a mamzer, he's your brother. Why would you think otherwise? Why would you think that if you have a, a brother, you know, if you have a brother, uh, that if he's a mamzer, there's no yidin. The same says and we learned before Achim is to teach me. We learned from Ben Yaakov that I had the same father. So also, 
by the same, maybe Achav, just like the Bnei Yaakov were all kosher. He had four, Yaakov Avinu had four wives, but they were all kosher wives. Achav Bnei Yaakov, Malong Sheir, and Avlo Psul, and Avkam Shemlo Psul, and Kamash Malan, and we don't say that. We don't say it. We say even a mamzer. Why not? Maybe a mamzer, you know, should not talk to you. If you had a a, a, a brother, um, your brother was a mamzer. Uh, in other words, if your brother who was a mamzer was married to somebody and he died without children, you have to perform yibum on that woman. Maybe not a mamzer, you know, doesn't count. He says, keep doing yibum mifter nifter since we got the yibum. Mifter nifter meaning since like Abi Yibum, if that was a son that would potter him from Yibum, right? Even when you nearly Yibum, Mifter as Eishes Achav me Yibum, since he right since he as Eishes Achav me Yibum, if this was a son, if a man had a son who was a mamzer, potters the wife from Yibum, even if he had a son mamzer. Rashi gives an example of the Kigoni Mahilo Ben Mamzer. Man had a bad son who was a mamzer, Benasa Isha. And <clears throat> now mamzer means that he had a forbidden relationship, either from another mamzeris or from an isercharis where there is no ishus, but it was a son. You can have a son even out of wedlock, it's still your son, right? Unless it was from a shiksa or a shifcha. So let's say he had a son who was a mamzer. Venasi, now this man, man had a mamzer. He had a mamzer son. Now he got, he went straight and he married a Jewish woman, a regular Jewish woman, Venasi Isha, Umais and I died below Yoldolo without having children. To her men Yibam, she doesn't have Yibam. Why? Because the man had a son. Bishfil HaMamzer, Ben Bala, Kedi Alpha Kaman, Ben Eloan, if he had any son. So since the Gabi Yibam, this is a son, the Mamzer is counted as a son, that he potters his father's wife from Yibam, in this case. So the same thing, Meskek Nami he could also obligate his brother into Yibam. In other words, if he was if he was Mamzer, Leisha Sachav Yibam, Shafilu Enkan El HaMamzer, says Zakuk, uh, meaning, if the bro- if the the uh, the brother uh, if, if the brother who died was a mamzer, his brother performs yibum, and if the mamzer was the surviving brother was Shimon in the case we've been talking about, then you have to do chalitza as we saw in the Mishnah, right? You do chalitza, you don't do yibum because he's a mamzer. I esed the chalosase, right? The answer is that's only for the first. It only helps for the first for consummation. It doesn't help for further afterwards. And there goes, or be a Rishon, be a Rishon, not to be a Shneel. So Mitzvah Yadam Zaka, Rosh says, La'eshe Zach of Yibam, Shafilu Einkan, Ela, Mam Zerzeh, Zekuka L'chalitza, she has to do Chalitza. So it means over here, it works both ways, whether the, whether Reuven was a Mamzer or Shimon was a Mamzer, either way, you have to have to, you have to do uh, Chalitza. Right, well, if, if, that's right, well, no, not because of that, because of, not because you're going to make a Mamzer, because it's a forbidden relationship. Meaning, if Reuben was a mamzer and was married to Leah, even though even though Le- it was a forbidden relationship, but the Kedushin's chal, and you need to get, and if, if Reuben dies with no children, they didn't have any children, so Shimon has to perform Yibam on Leah, right? If Shimon's a regular guy, he could do Yibam or Chalitza. If the Leia mamzer is Shimon, if the mom, pardon? Leia's not a mamzer. No, is not a mamzer. Leia's not a mamzer. If Leah is a mamzeres, then, then you do chalitza, again, you do chalitza. If Shimon was the mamzer, again, you do chalitza. If Reuben was okay, and if, that's, what we, that's what we point. Echav l'chol davar. And so and if you have a brother, even a mamzer, he's your brother. He's your brother. And uh, you know, you, you more chalitza applies depending on how it works out. Basically, so Yosho, you ask your brother. You ask your brother, right? If the brother had no children, right? Then who's the Yerusha? If your brother dies with no children, who does the Yerusha go to? Goes to the father. If the father is not around, it goes to his sons. Who's you? So you're Yarshanim, he's your brother. Well, a Tamil, if you're a Kohen, if you're a Kohen, you can only give a Tamil to your seven next, next of kin, right? Well, he's your kin also. Well, he's your brother. Why not? I'm having hold except it says, Kim, Shera Karvela. Who is a Kohen supposed to give a Tamil to? Only the Shero means his wife. Amar, Shera Zu Ishto, Siv, even though you're supposed to give a Tamil to your wife, it says, Lo Yitami Bal Ba'ama. A husband should not be metami himself lehechalo to desecrate him to desecrate himself. What does that mean? That yesh bal shem Sometimes you are metami to your wife. Yesh bal shem metami. It's not metami to wife. Okay, it's a metami lishtuk shera. He's only metami if he's married to somebody who he's allowed to be married to. Bein metami lishtuk psula. If the coin is married, let's say to a grusha or to a mamzeris that he wasn't supposed to marry, and now 
she dies, he doesn't become tummy to her because he's supposed to get rid of her. Hachanami, so maybe that's the case. Yeah, so I might think what just like by your if a Cohen's married to somebody he's not supposed to be married to, he's not metamiter here also. He's only metamiter to ach kosher and not metamiter to a, to a mamzer. A Cohen should not be metamiter to his mamzer brother. Kamash malon that he does. Why not? Maybe he shouldn't. Maybe just like her, just like a Cohen should not be metamiter to his wife who's a grusha. He should not maybe metamiter to his to his brother who's a mamzer. Says hasama puke kaima. Over there, he's supposed to divorce her all the time. If a coin's married to a grusha, he's supposed to get rid of her. So you can't say now that she dies, he should be metamitur, because it's really not supposed to be his wife. Yes, it, technically it's a kedushin, he has to give her a get, but he's not going to metamitur. Ha ha ha, but here he's your brother. Your brother's your brother. You can never change your, your, your brother. You know what I mean? Your, your brother's always a brother. That's, that's, that's facts of life. And therefore, you are metamitur. Unless you had a brother who was born from a mother who was a shifcher of his called my time. I'm recalling the post by Shavila Det, he held now. By Shifcha, it says that, right? If your uh Evid Ivory was given a shifcha by his master, and then when he goes out, he shall be led to yell at will stay to the master. They don't go with him because it's not his children. It could be Isha and the other the children are considered uh are considered the children of the shifcha, not of you. Mishi Eshlo, we'll talk more about this tomorrow, right? Because we're going to see more about this tomorrow. Because talk about it because it's Ashav Yodet Yodna by Shifcha, and we learn the same thing else for a uh, another pasuk for a uh, for a Shiksa. Mishi, we had that before, right? Ki Yasher Ben Chacharai, we had that the Russia before that your son, your grandson from a Jewish woman is your is your grandson or your son, right? From a Jewish woman, your grand your son from a non-Jewish woman is not your son. Mishi Eshlo Ben Nikomal Kompoter. Again, we talked about a brother, it's been good a mamzer. Also, we talked about a son, he's a son of my time. My time, the Dumber Color Pussy says, Ubain ain't low, I ain't alone. Pussy says, if a key, a yeshwiach niachta, two brothers, the brothers live together, and he dies, Ubain ain't low, he has no children. And it says, ain, you could say, ain't without a yud. As it says, Rashi points out certain cases where it says, ain't yavami, certain cases without a yud. Here he puts in the yud to darshan it. As if it's as if it says ayin a love with an ayin, the dot he's emphasized the yud to say ayin a love, check if he had any children at all. That doesn't mean only a son, it means any offspring at all. Or for example, let's say you know you have to check, make sure that, that he had any offspring at all. Now or or even if his wife is pregnant, we'll see. You don't perform Yibum because maybe she's gonna have a bench uh Zerashal Kayama. If when he if when he uh when Ruvain dies, he had a son. But the son died previous to his death, then there would be. It's at the time that he dies, was there any children or anybody pregnant, you know, like, like that? So he says you have to check. In other words, this is a son. Because what's the reason? Because Paskas obey they love, but he does have a son. It's a mamzer, but he's still a son. Might be a nice boy. No, well, you, you have to you'd have to wait just to see if she's pregnant. A woman usually shows after three months. So you have to wait to see if she's pregnant. Hmm? Well, the waiting, the waiting is always 90 days, always three months between any marriage. That's Lahab Zera. In other words, normally any woman should wait three months uh, to get remarried after, a, a, after she's been widowed or divorced to know whose child it would be. Because since you could have a seven month child, if she get married right away, let's say she marries right away. Okay, so so in a case in a case where the woman is pregnant, first of all, any woman has to wait three months. That's la zera to know whose child it is, it's a coin or not or whatever. That that's one you check. But let's say she didn't wait; she wasn't over anything. If her husband died or divorced, there was no case of even, and she got married without waiting, so she didn't wait. So now, now you may have a question: whose child is it? When many, you're not sure whose child it is unless you do DNA testing like you have today. That's in a regular case. In a case of Yavama, you want to wait at least three months to see if she's pregnant. If it turns out she is pregnant, then you want to wait full till term to see if the child is, survives or not. That's what you would do. We'll talk about that all later on, but that's uh, that answers your point. Okay. The Chayav Amakoso. And your son is a son, even if he's a mamzer. By the way, I just said that, that, uh, you know, in Yiddish, they say that, uh, you know, uh, that a grandfather or a mother, a grandmother or a, ch- or a parent could say to his child, you little mom, sir, because he knows he's not a mom, sir. In other words, it's improper to call somebody a mom, sir. 
but many grandparents, you know, lovingly say you little momzer because they know he's not, so that's okay. But otherwise, don't call somebody a momzer. It's not nice. And if your if your son is a momzer, he's he's your son, and therefore, if he hits you, chayv misa. So am I? Am I why should why not? Mari kind. If if your father if your father <clears throat> fathered a momzer, he's not such a nice, not such a good guy. And the pasuk says. Uh, says you shouldn't curse uh, uh, a the prince in your nation when he's a good Jew. So that's when you're not supposed to curse and hit hit, hit uh, your father or your or your king or whatever when he's uh, when he's a good Jew. But over here he gave birth to a mamzer, so uh, he's not such a good guy. It's kind of a papa. Speaking about here when he did chuba, when he did chuba, he's also mamcha. So he also we talking about when he did chuba. He, he did he did uh, father a mamzer either because he married a wrong woman or because you know he married a wrong woman. That's what he did. But he did chuba now. So he said, about chuba? How can you do chuba? By the time we learn Shimon Asi Omer, Ezam moves like Yochaliskin. What is a crooked thing that cannot be corrected? Zebala erba. Well, he mamzer. If you gave if you committed incest, let's say, and you get a mamzer, a mamzer can never be fixed. That was the point you keep making, right? That uh, what do you do? It's not fair. Right? You can't be fixed. So how can you say he did tshuva? So the to me also osimah He did tshuva. Yes, it's true. Why well, can't be fixed? Because the kids are mamzer. There's no, no no way to correct that. Everybody sees. Oh, that's his son, the mamzer. People know that. There's no way to stop people talking, and it's a bad bad thing. But he did tshuva as of now. Like a murderer, a murderer could do tshuva also. Doesn't mean you know if there's Adam and Asra, they're going to kill him anyway, right? There's Adam and Asra on, on uh, or. or uh, the, the person who had a mamzer by committing an uh, uh, incest on a chorus, he lived with his sister, so Hashem's going to give him a chorus. Or a married woman, or a married woman, there's eight of us who are going to kill him. That tshuva is not an answer. Tshuva is for, for God, you know, tshuva is for God. And right now, you say, listen, the fact is he's still his son, and therefore he's chayim makas. Here we're going to talk about, <clears throat> there's two psukim, in Perakir Ches, of Ayikra, Pasuk Tes and Pasuk Yidal, they're two similar psukim. Habala Choso, a man slept with his sister, the Bas Ashes And she's not only his sister, but she's also the daughter of his father's wife. Now, you could have a sister who's not the daughter of your father's wife. You could just be two, a brother and sister were born out of wedlock. They have the same father, right? So Habala Choso, but she's also the daughter of his, of her father, of his father's wife. So the Tanakam says, Chayev Mishima, Achoso Mushim Bas Ashes. There's two Isurim over here. <laughs> he's chayiv two things for his sister and for bas eshes aviv. He's chayiv twice. Okay, he's chayiv. What does it mean? Chayiv Christ. He did a peshogeg, maybe being two korbanos. But chayiv mishum achoso mishum bas eshes aviv. That's the Tanakh Amar. The Yerushalmi says no. Ain't chayiv el mishum achoso. He's only chayiv b'chosu b'bad. Love me, love me, bas eshes aviv. It's not chayiv for bas eshes aviv. There's two psukim. One, the first pasuk. We're going to see the psukim now. Love me eshes aviv. My to my drabon. What's the reason why drabon say chayiv twice? Amri says, Mikhtik, if it says Erbas Achoscha Basavicho Basimecha, it says the, the Erbab, your sister, who's either your father's, how is a person your how is she your sister? Either she's your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, but they're not not father and mother, born out of wedlock, let's call it. Okay. That's one iser. So why does it say afterwards in Pasikir Aleph, Erbas Bas Asha Sabicha, the, the 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 daughter who is the daughter of your father's wife, Moleta Sabicha, born to your father, Achoscha he. What do you need that extra pussy for, Amelie? Shema melchayim shemachosim shembas eishes of it. In other words, if you only if you live with your sister who was out of wedlock, you only chayef for a choso. If you live with your sister who was born in wedlock, she's your father's wife's daughter. You chayef two things for a choso and bas eishes avicha. Two things. That's the Tanakh. Rabbi Yosef Yudomer. The pasuk says second pasuk says achos chahi. She's your sister to tell you mishemachosa to mechayev. We tell mechayev shembas eishes of it. You only chayef one. You only have one. Why do we need two psukim then for? Just say one. We'll see. For Rabban and Haya Choski, what do they do with the Choski? The Rabbanon say these are two different things. One is she's your sister, and besides that, she's also your. If she's if she's if she, in addition to being your sister, she's also your father's wife's daughter. You're chayiv for that too. So what do they do with Choski? Let's say she's your father. If I would only have one person, then maybe you're only chayiv on your on on uh, your on your sister out of wedlock. But if she's in wedlock, she's both in wedlock means she's your sister, both uh, you share the, the same, the father and mother, right? Meaning that you're born in wedlock. 
if she's your father, if she's the daughter of your father and mother, right? That means that they were married. Isn't it a Kalvachomer? If you're Chayiv on your sister out of wedlock, who's not the father, not the daughter of your mother and your and your father. So certainly if it was born in wedlock, if she's from both, the answer is no. In Messiah and Adin, we don't get based on the Kalvachomer, you can't say. So we have a plus tummy both ways, whether she's out of wedlock or in wedlock, meaning she's born to your mother and father, or maybe born just to one of them, you're still you're either way, you're Chayiv. That's what the Rabbana do with Achos so he to tell me. That if she's your, but she's still your sister, even if she's a full sister, a full sister also. Why do I need it for? Ain't Masir Menadin. Tell me, even Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda, MK, if it would only be to tell me, Ain't Masir Din, just say she's your sister. So, okay, fine. That's also your sister. Not only is a sister on one side, if she's your half sister, let's call it, but even if she's your full sister in wedlock, you're both, you're born in wedlock, what both of you. What if she's just your, your father's wife's daughter with no blood relationship. Your father's wife's daughter from a previous marriage. Right. That that's that's Batesha. That's not uh, your sister. That's that's Bas Aisha Zabicha. In other words, she's not your sister at all. She's a she's a stepsister. You can marry her. You can marry her. You can marry her. A stepsister. Yeah. I always tell you a case. I had no idea there was a guy in Yeshiva with me. The wah holder, and they they adopted seven children, and a couple of them got married to one another. Avoid the, uh, yeah, the it, avoid the. But uh, Aisha's. Aisha's 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 but she's not your sister. That's no, she's not. She's not your sister. In this case, a a a a a, 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 a stepsister, a stief sister, or a, a, you're allowed to marry her. You're allowed to marry. There's no relationship there. Here we're talking about where there's a relationship. She's either your half sister or your full sister. So, so he's Rabbi Yosef Yehuda. If you don't want to tell me I'm a sister, then just say a chosra. Tell me that okay, this is also a full sister. Not only a half sister, a chosra. He lumly. What is that extra plus? What is the extra word? He lumly. You should make chosra. To make chayv. To make chayv. You should make chayv. You should make You only have one. You only have for a chosra. There's no special sister of bas aches of it if she's your sister uh, on both sides. Uh, you know, she's a full sister. Rabbanan. Even though it says a chosra, you have to say it because the Rabbanim say that a chosra is a masir meredim. But why do I still say he? Shalot Tomer Baum, maybe normally masir meredim. So why do I say a chosra? <laughs> if, if your half sister is your sister, certainly your full sister, because sometimes the Pasik, even though it's a Kalvachomer, the Pasik tells you to anyway. It says a chosra, she's also your sister. So why does it say he? Because of Rahman, he to tell me, no, ain't to tell me that. Oh no, you don't always say a kavachom. Tell me that Amos here You have to tell me that locha. Meaning, even though I would know that your half, the pasuk is your half sister is forbidden to you, you still tell me your full sister. You can't learn a kavachom when it comes to a losa say to teach me a losa say. Rabbi Yosef Yehuda imkin lachmana lachos chayi beidachra. So say the pasuk of chos chayi in the first pasuk. The first pasuk, pasuk test, which talked about ever sachi chobas avi chobasi mecha, half sister or out of wedlock, meaning she's not your full born out of wedlock. That's out of wedlock. So it should say, if a choschahi is coming, tell me that that even if she's from both sides, so tell me in that pasuk, even if she is, if, if your father and mother, you had the same father and mother, but both of you born out of wedlock. So tell me in the pasuk we're talking about out of wedlock. Why tell me a choschahi in the pasuk is talking about in wedlock? In wedlock, it's obvious. They were both born from the same parents. Same came lech brachmana la Rabbi Yosef Okay, so therefore, right, the Rabbi Yosef says, if it would be telling me this idea that uh, that not only if she's your half sister, but if you're full sister, so talk about a full sister in the pasuk gets talking about out of wedlock. Why talk about in the pasuk gets talking about wedlock? Therefore, we have this machlokis: Are you over on one or over on two? Rabbi Yosef Yehuda, high vas hashi speak on my own plate. What is Rabbi Yosef Yehuda? Rabbi Yosef says, says, listen, your your chayev uh, are your sister, whether she's your half sister, your full sister, makes no difference. What do I need the second pasuk for? High vas hashi speak on my own plate. Uh, to tell me that you're only chayiv, you're only chayiv uh, um, on on somebody who, if she's the if she's your father's wife's daughter, only if your father was legitimately married to her. If she's only your sister because she came from a, a shik. So in other words, you had the same father, but your mother, but her mother was a shiksa. So technically, you have the genes are gene-wise, gene she's your sister, but she was born from a shiksa of, of Ereskechavim. 
that's not your sister. That's not considered your sister. The aim of Prat, you understand? If, you're, if your sister, you had the same father, but you had two different mothers. One, you were, one was born from Rachel, one was born from Leah. She's still your sister. But if one was born, you were born from Leah and she was born from uh, a Shiksa, your, 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 the, your sister was born from a Shiksa, that's not your sister, right? Maybe it excludes uh, your sister from a uh, out of wedlock. Maybe you're only chayiv, right? Maybe the pasuk is telling me you're only chayiv on a sister if she's your sister born in wedlock. But if she was born out of wedlock, anusa means she was raped or was, was simply out of wedlock. Maybe that's not your sister. You can't say that. But the rav is Russia. The rav of except in one hand it says erbas bas pinchol bas pitcholo skale. It says you shouldn't. Mary, you shouldn't live with your granddaughter, right? That your 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 wife's uh, granddaughter, you could. Except the Arabs Asia who beat the Los Gal. On the other hand, says you can't marry your wife's daughter or her granddaughter. Beat Los Galis Baspa Mes Baspita. So how does that work? Okay, it said Kamba Onsen Kamba Nesuin. That's what it means. It means this that in the first passage, it's talking about what that uh, your granddaughter uh, you can't live. That's speaking about where it was out of wedlock. And the second bus is speaking in wedlock. In other words, if let's say you slept with a woman out of wedlock, right, out of wedlock, and you had a child, you had a daughter, you, you can't live with her. That's based on the, on the psikkim of Zima, Zima, right? We had that. Or your granddaughter from her, you can't live because it's your granddaughter. Let's say she had a granddaughter. You were never married to her. This, this wife that you, that this woman that you had a child with. And and she and then from there you had a grandchild. You can't live with that grandchild, your granddaughter, right? It's your granddaughter. But let's say she had a granddaughter from somebody else. You were never married to this woman. She had a granddaughter. You can marry her. That's the point, because it says Eres bas pimchol bas pitchol oskale, but bas bano tido bas go. You could. On the other hand, you can't live with somebody your your wife's granddaughter. That's when she's your wife. Your wife's granddaughter you can't live with, but you're but you're out of wedlocks. A woman that you slept with and had children with, if she had other children, she had a granddaughter, you could live with her. So, what do you see over here? You see that you can't say, uh, what do you see that your sister, even out of Anusa, is still your sister? You can't live with your, you can't live with your, um, with your own, um, you know, sister. If your father had had several children from not when was not married, but it's still your, still your sister. Right, there's basma. So every basma from basma, blood scale. Every basma from basma, but you could. But it says every basma from basma. Okay, it's a kind of onsen. But onsen, every basma from me, no sister, blood scale. Every basma from me, isha chair. Gila, the lavish tree. Umi you beno min a onsen beno who bechem bito. Hilka gaviach for namiach for. They're still brothers and sisters. In other words, if you have the same, uh, if you have the same father or mother, she's your sister, right? If you have a, if you're have a sister who's your half sister. Either from your mother or your father, that's your sister, that's your sister. But if she's your sister, even if you had the same father, but she was born from a shiksa or a shifra, that's not your sister. And there's no iser over there. They say, well, there's an iser to marry her because she's a shiksa or, or, or a shifra. If she was Megayer now, technically you could, right? But then there's the iser drabana that we said that it shouldn't look like you're going from a homer to a uh, to a cow. All right, so the, but this isn't over yet because we just said that what is Rabbi, Rabbi Yosemite says, if you live with your sister, who's your full sister, right? That you're saying you're, she's your sister from your father and, and she's also the daughter of your wife's, of your father's uh, wife in your chayef too, says the Rabbana. Rabbi Yosemite says not. So what does Rabbi Yosemite do with the second Pasuk? That's to tell you that only Eishu Zavicha, you're only chayef if, if, you're, if she's from a woman that your father could marry, even if he didn't marry her, but he could marry. But if he's somebody that he couldn't marry, like uh, Shif for Knanis, that's not your sister. Maybe maybe it's excluding something else. We'll see this as we continue on the Fafimul tomorrow. Yeah.